The Bible says, "Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life." Peace of heart serves as the basis for success for everything. Peace in individual's heart becomes the basis for his successful life, and peace in our family's heart becomes the basis for happiness of our family. In addition, peace in a society and a country serves as the basis for the country's development and prosperity. Therefore, peace in our heart is important. Then, where can we gain this kind of peace? Every peace comes from God. If we leave God, who is the owner of peace, there is no peace anywhere. When Adam was with God, he had no anxiety, he had no fear. Only peace, rest, and joy overflowed. When Adam, Adam experienced anxiety and fear for the first time, when he committed sin and hid from God among the trees of the garden. When he committed sin and left God, anxiety and fear came into his heart. Since then, life that has left God is living, endlessly being chased by sin, the devil, diseases, poverty, and death. It has lost peace of heart. While people walk, they become very anxious if they lose their way. Even if a child wears good clothes and puts on nice shoes and has a handful of snacks, the child will become anxious if he loses his way in the deep mountain. Today, countless people don't know where they have come from, where they need to go, and where where they are standing. They are living like children who have lost their way, so their hearts are anxious. But those who seek God are always peaceful, no matter what kind of situations they face. Psalms ninety-one one says, "He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty." Our Almighty God is our refuge and our fortress. God in whom we trust. Therefore, no matter what kind of situations you and I encounter, we are able to enjoy peace. These days, pneumonia that started in Wuhan, China, is spreading at a rapid pace. This has caused alarm in the world. Thousands of people are infected, and hundreds of people have died in China alone. There is no medicine for treatment, so anxiety and fear are completely filled in people's heart. But those who believe in God. Can enjoy peace in their hearts because God becomes their refuge. What does the Bible say? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. There are many dangers in this world, but we who believed in God. And have become God's children, have refuge. We can hide in God's embrace. We can pray to God by by kneeling down. So, no matter what kind of situations we face, we can be peaceful. To gain peace that comes from God, we need to be in harmony with God by believing in Jesus. Even today, God is telling us to be in harmony with Him. To those who are shaking in anxiety and fear, he is inviting them, saying, "Come to me and be in harmony with me. Come back to my arm." Second, to live by enjoying peace, we must always believe in God and rely on Him. If you look in the Bible, a fight between David and Goliath is shown. David lived by diligently reading the Bible every day and praying to God in heaven. Even though his body was on earth, his heart lived in heaven. On the other hand, Goliath was carried away with his height, weight, and manfulness. He lived in self-satisfaction and confidence. 
David was focused on God, but Goliath was focused on self-praise. Thus, Goliath was satisfied with his life on earth, and David was satisfied with God and lived in God. David, who always lived in God, looked to God and relied on Him in the fight against Goliath. In turn, he was able to win in the fight against Goliath. When looking at with the eyes of the third dimension, David couldn't deal with Goliath. Goliath was a giant who was three meters tall, and David was just a boy. If you look in the Bible, it says, When the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. When people looked at Goliath and all ran away, David boldly moved forward and said that he will fight against Goliath. What was the secret behind this? David believed in God and looked to Him. When all people looked at things with the eyes of the third dimension, David looked at things with the eyes of the fourth dimension. David declared, God is with me, so I will definitely win. And he moved boldly. When we look at how David was countering Goliath with spoken words, we are greatly amazed. David made a very positive and bold confession of faith. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Goliath heard David and threatened, Come here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. But David didn't succumb. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come, ag but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. What is the difference in the argument between the two? Goliath only relied on his strength. He wasn't aware of God. But David said that he's going to the battle with God by relying on him. What is clearly different is that Goliath is shown as an individual who belongs in the third dimension in the fight. But David is shown as a man of God. David didn't fight by himself. He fought with God, so he couldn't be defeated. Those who believe in Jesus must look to God and always win in the war of wards. If you say, it will not be done for me, I can't do it, I can't do it, then you will already be defeated with those words. But if you say, I can do it, it will be done when I do it, let me do this, I will win, God is with me, then God will be with you through those words. Thus, when we speak, we must speak with faith. Speaking with faith is to not speak by looking at the present, but to speak by looking at what will happen in the future. I can do it. It will be done when I do it. Let me do this. I am healed. Saying these words is to confess what will happen in the future and not what is happening now. Speaking following exactly what we see means we have no faith. Even if our children do something that we don't like, we shouldn't say, you'll grow up to be no good. Even if it may seem like they show no promise of success, you shouldn't say those words. Even though it may seem like they have a slim chance of success in the future, you must say, you'll be a great person in the future. This is to speak with faith. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Therefore, we must speak of what we hope for. People with no faith speak following what they see, but people with faith speak by looking at what will happen in the future. When we look to the things that will happen in the future and make commands and declarations, the work of faith comes. There was a church member whose husband had died. She raised her children by herself. She worked at a construction site, and unfortunately, she 
got into an accident and her two legs were greatly damaged. After the examination, it was discovered that her bones were crushed into pieces. She went through an operation, but the result was not good. Her doctor told her that her bones will not heal back to normal, and the and one of her legs will be shortened. There's almost no possibility for recovery, and that she might limp for the rest of her life. This was a bolt out of the blue. But strangely, she had peace in her heart. She thought, God is making me to rest right now. When she was hospitalized, she prayed and read the Bible. But it, because she was in a hospital, it was hard for her to focus on the Word. Since then, she only focused on this one Bible verse and meditated on it and made declarations. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. She meditated on this Bible verse continuously and made declarations. She closed her eyes and suddenly she saw her legs turning red. She was surprised and she opened her eyes. And at that moment, she had assurance that God had healed her. The next day, she got an examination done, and amazingly, both of her legs that were broken were healed. Her legs were completely healed all of a sudden. When we rely on the Word of God, pray and make declarations with spoken words, miracles will come into your life. Third, in order for us to enjoy peace, we must look to God and pray. Peace doesn't come when we just sit still. We must think about who God, who we believe in, is and look to Him in our heart. And we must believe in God, pray for His protection, and confess this with our mouth. Psalms 91, 2-3 is just that. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Isn't this an amazing confession of faith? We must look to the fact that God is our refuge and our fortress. Believe in this, pray, and confess this with our lips. A fortress is an impregnable castle. A fortress doesn't collapse even if it's attacked. Although... The castle of every human being is collapsed. The castle of God doesn't collapse. Therefore, only God is our fortress and our refuge. In addition, we must confess that God is my God in whom I trust. Because God loves us, He gave His Son. So how will, how will He who gave up His Son not give us other gifts along with Him? Because we have God who loves us. We can trust Him, trust in Him in our lifetime. Psalmist confessed, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. I grew up in the countryside. Eggs would hatch, and chickens would take their chicks to the front yard. Hen will take her chicks and she would be filled with excitement and open her wings when dogs or cats come near her chicks she would call her chicks and cover them with her wings the chicks would go under her wings then dogs and cats can come near them one day our chicken coop was on fire I found out in the morning that The hen was all burned and died, but her chicks all survived under her wings. The hen protected her chicks under her wings, so she didn't even run away. The Bible says the Lord covers us with His wings, and His faithfulness will be our shield and rampart. Psalmist confessed, You will not fear the terror of night. nor the air that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the, nor the plague that destroys at midday. The terror of night is a tribulation that you face unconsciously. 
we are surprised and shocked when bad news come in the middle of the night in an in an unprepared state of mind. Tribu. There are times when tribulations comes unconsciously. There are bad news these days. There are so many things that are happening that. Can't be stopped with our own strength, but when we are under the Lord's wings, the Lord will help us to avoid them. We're not even afraid of the arrow that flies by day. The arrow that flies by day means planned slander or attack. As we live our lives, struggle for existence is so fierce that we frame and attack each other. Even if we try to avoid them. We can't, but when we go under the wings of the Lord, we are able to avoid them. Even if the arrow that slanders and attacks us flies, when we go under the Lord's wings, the Lord will stop the arrow. God protects us from infectious disease that spreads in darkness, as I have mentioned earlier. There is infectious disease called Wuhan pneumonia outbreak. It comes as fear because there is no medicine for treatment. Even if medical technology has developed, such disease can't be conquered with man's strength. But if we go under the Lord's wing by praying, the Lord will protect us from such disease. There is also plague that comes at midday. Plague can come when we do not know. Sudden accidents can't be stopped with our strength. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Even if disasters come, if we go under the Lord's wing by prayer, such disasters. Can't harm us. Even if we face hardships, we must believe in God and rely on Him. Then we have nothing to fear. If we pray by believing in God, God will protect us and solve our problems. There was a church member. He didn't believe in Jesus long time ago. He suffered from lung cancer that one of his lungs was removed. His cancer recurred, and he had to go through another operation. Fortunately, the surgery went well, and he was getting ready to leave the hospital. But suddenly, he had difficulty in breathing and lost consciousness. He got it. He was in a coma, and he was admitted to ICU. Doctors told his family that. There's no hope for him. His wife was a Buddhist, and his daughter was Christian. His wife went into a Buddhist temple, and his daughter went into a prayer room and prayed to God. His wife was told go and prepare for a funeral, but a pastor of the prayer room told his daughter that when you when family accepts God, your father. When they accept God, your father will come back to life. So, what will you choose if you are in that situation? Of course, you will choose the way of life, not the way of death. So, her, his whole family, decided to believe in God of hope. His wife accepted Jesus, and his wife began to throw away statues of Buddha. Her whole family prayed to God, and. The patient, who was in a coma for a month, woke up. Hallelujah! The patient testified later that when he was in a coma, someone came to him and prayed by putting his hand over his heart, and people around him and said, "Because Pastor Yonggi Cho prayed for him, he will definitely be healed." Right when he heard those words, he woke up from coma. He testified this, despite. The fact that he couldn't wake up with men's common knowledge, when he held on to God at the moment of death, he was healed. No matter what kind of situations you are in, if you hold on to God and pray, God will become your way of life. Our society is filled with anxiety in all areas today. So our citizens have an earnest hope. When will peace come? 
when we take refuge in the Lord's wings and rely on the promise of God with no lies, we can enjoy true peace. When we take the rough path called life, God's protection for us is a blessing that can't be compared with anything in this world. Those who believe in God and rely on Him will never fail. They will never be defeated. No matter what kind of situations you face, look to God and pray by going before Him. Then, God will give you overflowing peace in your heart and a life where you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.